Hello people, that is that time again of the year. We get this this video once per year, and that is the JW Awards. Last year is the Kid Critic Oscars. I changed my name to JW Reviews, and JW Reviews Awards didn't make sense, so I decided JW Awards, and yeah, you know, my name, Jonathan Whitup, JW. So that's it. But what inspired me to do an award show last year is because um, for, for Christmas, my dad got me um this... <laughs> um like a impression of me but as iron man and so i thought to myself this looks like an oscar <laughs> and so i and it inspired me to do this because it does kind of look like one so yeah so i make a joke saying 19 films will walk will walk away with one of these and stuff like that but yeah here here he is here later he's here um before i had um official certificates this year is just on two pieces of paper all the winners because I just didn't want to waste that much paper. Save the trees. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, but I do have to make an announcement. I am not going... Next year, I will not do these these awards until most... Until most of the, nom the nominations are out, especially. Because I did my nominations before any other awards show released their nom nominations. It's not because I want to copy them. Because what happens is... I see most of the movies I see during the year, obviously, but then there's awards films, movies that are weights on um, that are made for awards that just completely go on under everyone's radar until they really nominate them. So there's movies on here that I didn't see until after the awards nominations, like obviously Judas and the Black Messiah, um, One Night in Miami, um, and many others. So I decided I am not going to really announce my nominations until most of the nominations have been announced and i won't do well i'll do my awards whenever i want because it doesn't necessarily all that matters is i see the awards films so i can do the jw awards properly because this year it just there's movies on here or i, I only nominated three for each category because of a lack of variety from 2020 so but this year there's movies i saw after the um I, my nominations, but I just can't, you know, put them on here now because that that's just not fair to the to these other movies that I've already nominated. So, yeah. Anyways, let's just get into the awards. So, anyways, sorry I had to cut out for a second. I need to get my nominations list as well. So, yeah. Anyways, the first award of the night goes to most heartfelt movie of 2020 and the nominees are onward soul and wonder woman 1984 and the winner from those choices that i had to make it's no academy it's just my choice the winner out of those three is wonder woman 1984 so yeah i know this is a very um controversial movie overall but i did end up liking this movie you know this is the only award that you know it was nominated for two awards and it score and heartfelt so but the reason why it won this is just because even though the movie isn't perfect it's far from it it the what made the movie good for me was the movie's heart and how much it appreciated um the wonder woman character and how much they nailed the emotion of what was really going on i think so yeah that's why it won that the next um award goes to visual effects and the nominees are bad boys for life love and monsters and tenet and the jw award goes to i know it but tenet um yes the visual effects and tenet were out of this world it's because it's the one it seamlessly um blends in with the movie and Two, it, we didn't. There's not any really more big heavy visual effects movies in 2020. You can think of Birds of Sp Birds of Prey, but I thought the visual effects were better in Tenet. It's not, and I'm not trying to do that awards show thing where they just nominate the one that nominate the um give the winner to the one that just seamlessly fits in. Um, there's there are movies that do more than seamlessly fit in, like Endgame that had fantastic visual effects and but it didn't win and out of that's who i thought should have won in the 2020 um oscars but um i think this movie also vi visually fits in the best but also just looks the best in general so 
yeah. Anyways, the award for best surprise. I have it somewhere on here. Please stand by. I have it somewhere on my nominations. I have them in complete different order, so I'm going to try and... S okay, there they are. <laughs> Sorry about that. Anyways, the nominees for Best Surprise are Bad Boys for Life, The Father, and Love and Monsters. And the winner for Best Surprise of 2020 are, well, is Bad Boys for Life. The reason why I gave this Bad Boys for Life is yes, um... The Father was a surprise, but I didn't know the movie existed until I heard good things about it. Because I heard good things about it, I watched it on the day I heard of it, and it was my favorite movie of 2020. Um, but with the, um, where I'm totally getting lost, with, uh, bad, with, um, Love and Monsters, it was more of, um, <clears throat> it was, I saw the trailer, didn't plan to watch it. Heard good things about it, was surprised. But with Bad Boys for Life, there was a, the biggest gap of time of me thinking, this movie's gonna suck. Because it was a January release. It was just the dumping month where they just dump everything, all the crap on you. And so everyone, on even the studio, the studios purposely put out the movies in that month because they think it's going to suck. But the fact that the studio had no confidence in this movie, and yet it was still good, is why the movie won in my opinion the next award for the night goes to um is for best character and the nominees are elizabeth moss in the invisible man daniel o'brien as joel dodson and carrie mulligan as cassandra so the winner out of the three are carrie mulligan as cassandra in promising young woman the reason why i went with this pick is because um one, the, the character Cassandra is very complex herself, and um, Carrie Mulligan does, does the best job out of the three that I think um, applied character to screen, and I think she did a really good job at applying that. Yet the character didn't have the most range in the world. She always almost had the same look on her face the whole movie, but yet it was a big part of the character, and it was done really well by Carrie Mulligan. Next up is most entertaining, as long as if I could find it, on my list somewhere. Okay, the nominees are The Invisible Man, Soul, and Tenet. And yeah, yeah, Kid, uh, I'm so used to saying Kid Critic Award. The JW Award goes to The Invisible Man. The reason why I didn't go with Tenet or, well, Tenet in particular is because one, well, Soul isn't hard to follow, but um, Tenet it's hard to follow a movie, which makes the movie very inaccessible for the first hour, hour and a half of the movie. Once you get to the last hour of Tenet is when you, you kind of understand a lot more. Upon multiple rewatches, re that story kind of changes. But overall, and so, over technically in my opinion, well, I enjoy Tenet the most out of these three movies, but initial watch goes to The Invisible Man is the one I had the most fun with this year because Invisible Man, it's just always been consistently really good. Tenet gets better over time, but better over time still means that it wasn't the best when it started. So that's why it goes to The Invisible Man. Anyways, the nominees for Best Choreography are Birds of Prey, Extraction, and Tenet. And the JW Award goes to Tenet. The reason why I went with Tenet is because, well, one Birds of Prey... Birds of Prey choreography was very, very, very good. It just, it, it was John, it was John Wick, um, choreographer, and so was Extraction when it was literally directed by a stunt coordinator. It's just nothing beats the complexity of the choreography in Tenet. People moving backwards and forwards at the same time and capturing it in a camera is just out of this world. It's just how do they perfectly perfectly line up the choreography for that? It boggles my mind trying to think of it. I could see them trying to do the extraction or Birds of Prey, but where I could barely even think of how they did Tenet is the reason why it gets this award, because it's just a visual marvel to watch this choreography on screen. The next um, category goes to Supporting Actress, and the nominees are Olivia Colman for The Father, Tina Fey for Soul, and Elizabeth Debicki for Tenet. 
And the award goes to Olivia Coleman for The Father. The reason why I'm with, with this pick is because, well, one, Elizabeth Debicki, um, her character is the most emotionally resonant in Tenet, and she gave the most, uh, she, she, she gave the best performance in the movie, but yet it just still wasn't on par with, I don't think, Tina Fey, who think I gave a fantastic performance in um, Soul. It's just Olivia Coleman gave the most amount of range, was the most subtle, and did a very good job, and spe especially her um, back and forth with Anthony Hopkins is just amazing. So, yeah, anyways... Next category is Best Supporting Actor. And one of these nominees is one I just completely, I don't know why I put them in this category, in this category, but that is Delroy Lindo in The Five Bloods. He is not the supporting actor in the movie. He is the lead of the movie. So I don't know why I put that there, but it's there, but it's not supposed to be there. So anyways, the nominees, like I said, Delroy Lindo for The Five Bloods, Robert Pattinson for Tenet, and Shia LaBeouf for Pieces of a Woman. And the award goes to Shia LaBeouf for Pieces of a Woman. I know this is a controversial take because Shia LaBeouf is already surrounded with controversy controversy right now and his awards campaign is done. But I decided to go with this pick is because these are only allegations. I'm not saying they could totally be true. And if that's the case, um, I regret giving, giving him this award. But I don't want to be that person. I don't want to be that place to... Um, not give them an award just because they're allegations. They haven't been proven. They're just allegations. So that's why I decided to give them this award. But um, if he, if those allegations ever get pr proven to be true, I'm going to cover these next. That name right there will be scribbled out. And just there's no best supporting actor of um, 2020. <laughs> but yeah, next um, category is for production design. And the nominees are, if I can find them, Okay, The Father, Moraney's Black Bottom, and Tenet. And the production design, JW Award, just to throw him in here again, here he is. Um, the award goes to Moraney's Black Bottom. Moraney's Black Bottom had some fantastic production design, the way that they capture how... Oh, well, remember, the, the movie is literally takes place in about three rooms. And so we get to th know those three rooms very good. And the way I have those three rooms... I um I really liked Moraine's Black Bottom, but even though I thought I do have problems with that movie, um, without without a doubt, I could with the rooms they visit two or three rooms in this movie, and I could probably imagine those rooms in my head. I can't do that with, um, the father or tenant. Well, maybe with the father, but especially not tenant. Tenant because the production design was good in Tenant, but production design in Tenant just was more based off set pieces, so that's why I didn't get this award. In The Father, it was just, you know, a regular apartment in modern day. So, Moraine's Black Bottom had old time play, had an old time set, and yet I remember it so well in detail. Just, I could imagine these rooms from the movie. So, that's why I gave it to Moraine's Black Bottom. And the nominees for Best Musical Score, if I could find it, there we go, there it is, is Benjamin Wishif. Walfishnet that I can't speak for the Invisible Man, Ludwig Gornson for Tenet, and Hans Zimmer for Wonder Woman 1984. And the JW Award goes to Ludwig Gornson for Tenet. This is the most original score of the year. Um, Hans Zimmer's score was fantastic in Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman 1984, and it's the one I find myself listening to the most out of these three. But Ludwig Gorenson's was the most one of the most original scores I have ever heard. He's Hans Zimmer's score in Wonder Woman 1984 was very good and the most re-listenable, yet it just also felt very this is just another movie he's done. And um there is in the well actually the big reason why Wonder Woman 1984 didn't get this award is that that end of the third act where he reused mu music from Batman v Superman and then further on claims that it's the DCEU theme. Sure, I believe that. No, I don't. But, yeah, that also, because I have a specific problem I could point out with that um, score, is the reason why Wonder Woman 1984 didn't get it, and I gave it to Tenet. So, yeah, anyways, we're on to the next page <laughs> of awards. The next um, category is for editing. 
I'm sorry, you guys probably hear a lot of paper ruffling. Okay. The nominees for best editing is The Five Blood, The Five Bloods, <laughs> Extraction, and Tenet. And the JW Award goes to Tenet. The reason why I decided to go to Tenet is just because it also has to do with the choreography. How did they do it? How did they make things go backward and forward at the same time? Editing must have been an absolute nightmare. Um, the reason why Ex Defy Bloods and Extraction made it on here is because one, the choreography, the quick cutting in the movie really worked. Um, but it didn't, of course, nothing is going to ever beat the chore um, editing in Tenet. I think ever, <laughs> to be completely honest. And um, I know this side note uh -uh, right here. I know it sounds like Tenet is sweeping, and to be completely honest, it is sweeping my awards show. But the only reason why it's doing that is because of its technical achievement. I cannot deny a movie's technical achievement just because it might not be my favorite. Yes, it is. I'm a, I'm a complete Nolan nerd, and he's one of my favorite filmmakers out there. Well, he is my favorite filmmaker out there, I'm not going to lie. But... I'm not just saying giving him all these awards just because it's Christopher Nolan. I genuinely believe that the production behind Tenet is one of the best I have ever seen in my life. And that's why, of course, Tenet doesn't have any, um, you know, acting nominations just because the characters were very emotionally distant. Except, well, besides Elizabeth Debicki, who did get nominated. But, yeah, I just wanted to point that out there. But, yeah, The Five Bloods also I want to talk about for editing. The reason why I made it on here, it's nothing's too spectacular, but it feels like, almost like a presentation. It's a good movie, but in a presentation format. And that's all behind Spike Lee's fantastic directing in that movie. It feels like it's being presented to us in the way he wants to tell us the story. And it worked really, really well. Okay, the next category is for Best Animated Film. The nominees are Onward and Soul, and the winner for this is soul and that's all i really have to say about that because soul is the best animated and one out of the two movies animated movies i saw this year <laughs> next category <laughs> next category is for best cinematography and forgive me as i look for this okay it's actually the first one i have on my list i needed to work this out better and there's always next year this is kind of the throw throwaway year for awards so <laughs> Yeah, anyways, the oh, ah, the nominees for Best Cinematography are the, in, the Invisible Man, Pieces of a Woman, and Tenet. And the JW Award goes to Tenet once again. My god, I almost feel bad for these other movies. Um, the, be the cinematography in Tenet is just... Um, the cinematographer is one of my favorite cinematographers of, of all time. He did Interstellar, which is my favorite movie. And so, without a doubt, he gave a fantastic, some fantastic shots, especially um, with the way that they use lighting in this movie. It, the cinematography just captures the whole entire movie perfectly. The um, plane sequence where they actually crash a plane into a building and they shot it very nicely, it just worked. There's the, um, of course, the, we're just having re regular exposition, but oh, of course, they always find a way to make it interesting, whether they're having a conversation it's circling around them, and it's always visually interesting, no matter what they're doing in the movie. So yeah, next is Best Screenplay. As I look for the nominees, there they are. The nominees are, this is by the way, this is Adapted and Original. The Devil All the Time, The Father, and Promising Young Woman. And the JW Award goes to The Father. This movie just, it, it's the smartest movie. When, it's one of the smartest movies of 2020. Just because uh, the way that they capture what it's like to have dementia and the way that they make you get confused with the Anthony Hopkins is just brilliant. The screenplay shows his frustrations. And, and it's just amazing. And that's all I really have to say. But there is one little side note I want to make to that. There are two movies that I just think I need to shout them out because they're movies I saw after my um, my nominations, and it, it just, I can't give them the award, but I just wanted to point them out, and that is Judas and the Black Messiah and One Night in Miami, because those were both fantastic screenplays. Okay, we're getting into the big ones now. 
The nominees for Best Actress are Elizabeth Moss for The Invisible Man, Frances McDarwin, Nomadland, and Vanessa Kirby, Pieces of a Woman. The JW Award goes to Frances McDarwin, Nomadland. The reason why I went with this choice is because even though um, Frances McDarwin is just amazing from beginning to end with Nomadland. Meanwhile, Vanessa Kirby is fan like God level for the first 30 minutes and back down to um, a good performance, a very good performance for, uh, for the rest of the movie. While Frances McDarwin is just consistently God level for me. Um, she is very subtle with her acting. It's on point and gives, definitely gave one of the most fantastic performances of the year. And while Elizabeth Moss was very, very good and Invisible Man, I just don't think she just got to the level that Frances McDarwin did and showed with Nomad Land. But yeah. Anyways, the nominees for, if I could find it, I need to organize these better next time. The best actor are Anthony Hawkins, The Father, Chadwick Boseman, Moraine's Black Bottom, and Tom Holland, The Devil All the Time. Have not seen Cherry yet. He probably would have been nominated for that. <laughs> but anyways, the award goes to Anthony Hopkins for The Father. And Anthony Hopkins, he, he gave his best, this was his best performance since Silence of the Lambs. And I feel bad not giving this to Chadwick Boseman, but I just had to think to myself, if Chadwick Boseman hadn't died, would he be getting this award? And that answer was sadly, no. I had, I have to stay true to my opinion. I, I don't want to sound rude, but I can't give someone an award. I can't give someone, you know, a higher, I don't want to call it points, but I just don't want to give someone a higher opinion of their performance just because they passed. I know that sounds really rude and I feel bad for saying that. But I don't want to give, I'd rather give Anthony Hopkins, that sounds terrible what I just said. Anthony Hopkins is more deserving of this award than Chadwick Boseman. Yes, Chadwick Bo what happened to him was a tragedy, and it, it is really sad. But, and it's the most affected, affected I've ever been personally been by a celebrity death. But Anthony Hopkins' performance was just really be better. And if you, for the people disliking this video, I'm sorry. <laughs> I want to give it to Chadwick Boseman, but I just cannot do that in good conscience just because of how amazing Anthony Hopkins' performance was in The Father. The nominees for Best Director. This is where we start to expand on the nominations. So, yeah, this time, now we get to five nominees. Nominees are Spike Lee, The Five Bloods, Florin Zeller, the, the Invisible, I mean, The Father, Leo Winnell, the Invisible Man, Chloe Zano, Nomadland, and Christopher Nolan for Tenant. And the award, JW Award, goes to Christopher Nolan for Tenant. Um, I know probably I'm just punching the screen right now. I'm sorry, but Tenant, I want to show it right here. Tenant just it when you have <laughs> honestly. I'm going to be completely, completely honest with you guys right now. When you guys have a movie that's so original, never seen a movie like that before, the most clever action you've ever seen, the one and also remaining extremely beautiful to look at and is fun to break down, it's got to go to Christopher Nolan's room. Let me put this movie back real quick. Um, but... It's just these action sequences and the inversion. It just all seamlessly looks so amazing. And that's why I have to give Best Director to Tenet. So, yeah, the nominees for Best Film are The Five Bloods, The Father, The Invisible Man, Nomadland, and Promising Young Woman. And the Kid Critic, not Kid Critic, I, my God. The JW Award goes to the father. The situation is very simple. My daughter is of the opinion that I cannot manage on my own. I'm so sorry about this. Why? She understands perfectly. 
is important. I explained it all to you. Why do you keep looking as if there's something wrong? Everything is fine. I think she tries to do the best she can for you, Anthony. Everything will be all right. I promise you. There's something funny going on. It's just so... It's presented amazingly from beginning to end. And it's just a fantastic movie. And the, one of the most emotional movies of the year. And the reason, of course, probably think you guys are probably thinking, Oh, Tenet sweeped. What are you talking about? It's just... Um, it's just Tenet. Like I said, it's crafted amazingly. It's just... It's not the most accessible movie. The... Um, and... Um, yeah, it just can get very confusing. It's the most, not the most audience friendly. Not the average audience is willing to go watch, sit down and watch a movie about five, six, seven times. And so that's why I just couldn't nominate it for calling it the best top tier movie of 2020, even though it is personally one of my favorites. But I, I just couldn't do that in right mind. But yeah, I'm, I'm sorry for, for if you guys are going, yes, Tenet all the way. I'm sorry about that. And for those of you that are going, why are you nominating Tenet so much? You're welcome. <laughs> But, yeah, anyways, last award. Here we go. Favorite film. The nominees are The Five Bloods, The Father, The Invisible Man, Promising Young Woman, and Tenet. And the JW Award goes to Tenet. Well, that from here. Hasn't happened yet. There are people in the future who need us. I need a tenant. We need to save them here and now. This reversing the flow of time. Doesn't us being here now mean it never happened. Favorite film, my personal pick. You could probably tell from the rest of this from the rest of these awards that this was going to go to tenant for a favorite film. Um, yeah, it, it's just, you can probably tell that I didn't nominate no Nomadland. Yes, Nomadland is just, it's a fantastic film. I just don't see myself going back and watching it again like I do see these other movies. I've already watched Tenet about six or seven times. It's the most I've watched any movie this year on repeated viewings. And that was within a span of a couple months. So, yeah, and, and I don't really want to elaborate on that anyways. So, I know these awards weren't the best, and as I'm recording it, I was saying to myself, wow, this is turning out not as I really want it to, but you guys have to keep in mind, next year will be better, because 2020 was just, uh, it, it, it was just, it was 2020, and so it just, take, give me a pass this year, because I'm still, I've only done this video twice, it's gonna get better as it goes, I promise you that. And yeah, next year, like I said, I'm not going to nominate until I've seen the nominations that most of the award shows have given out. I don't want to give out because like I said, I'm going to say it again. Like I said, these award shows, they bring out, they, I don't know about these movies until most of them are nominated and then I watch them because I don't know. Of course I see the reviews for them, but people are always reviewing movies. I don't know which ones to watch. So the award shows tell me these ones are really good. You should go ahead and watch those. And as you can see, like, it's not I'm not only going to nominate award films. I gave Wonder Woman, I gave Wonder Woman 1984 a JW award. I gave Tenet 7. I don't care what the, you know, the not, the award shows are telling me. I, ca I care about what they say. I, I watch their movies, and I still haven't seen all of the movies. I still want to really see Minari. I still really want to see Cherry. It's just, you know, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do the nominees or the show's or the um, awards until I see these movies that I'm being told to watch because I'm, I'm not saying the um, these award shows don't know what they're talking about. They really do know what they're talking about. But of course, there's gonna be movies there I do like. There's movies there I don't like and think, why are, this, why are these movies keep on getting nominated? But yeah, just keep that in mind for next year and it will be better, I promise you that. So yeah, anyways. That's the JW Awards for 2020, a little bit of a letdown. I'm a little bit let down myself that this turned out this way, but I promise you it will be better next year in 2022. Wow, it's far away. So yeah, 
Anyways, like, share, subscribe, and stuff like that, and adios.